So I was going to print a couple photos I took recently, and I thought I would actually, with the Insects uh, SP1 printer, and I thought it would be kind of cool to just do a quick video of this and discuss it. So I got this uh, a little while back. Uh, I would say within it was some point in 2014 I got it. I'm not sure exactly when. I've had it for a while, probably something like six months or more. I had this before I had a Fuji camera that connected to it. So I was car at the time I was shooting just the X Pro One and the X 100s neither of which had it. I think they had recently or uh, maybe not too long after I had gotten this, they had done a firmware upgrade. I think to the XM One or XA One and XM One to do it. But uh, people were complaining, you know, why didn't the X-T1 have it? Sure enough, you know, months went by and eventually they implemented the upgrade. Which I'm not even sure if the original firmware, when I bought this camera, uh, you know, a few months ago, if it had the ability, because as soon as I took it out of the box, I had already downloaded the firmware and immediately switched it to the upgraded firmware because it had the electronic shutter and whatnot. Uh, in either case, so how I was using this at the time is, you know, I'd go ahead and turn it on. You may have a little bit of trouble seeing these these LEDs. So what this is, is the battery indicator. You see uh, three bars. It's not super accurate. It's kind of like a Fuji battery indicator in that sense where I was sh using this. It had three bars. And then one day I needed it. Actually, I was at a birthday party for my uh, a niece and I wanted to print a photo and I couldn't because I pulled out my bag, turned it on, tried to send the photo as soon as it attempted to print, all of a sudden all the lights shut off and the batteries had died. I didn't have a couple, a set, I didn't have a spare set of batteries for because he uses a special CR, CR2, I believe, lithium battery. Uh, let's just look. CR2 or CR5, I forget. CR2. So I didn't have any of those on hand, and, you know, nobody just keep these on hand normally like they would a double a or something but uh anyway don't you know don't really trust this and again it uh it didn't last i think they say 100 prints it didn't get near that anyway that's battery and then over here you have your 10 frames your 10 exposures and i have two left that's obviously accurate so what i would do is i would break out my iphone here and use the what they call the instax share app open that up Go to my photos. I'm trying to find the one I want to print real quick. Uh, where was it? This one. So, what you can do with this, it's, uh, let me get the phone closer. Hopefully, this will focus pretty good. Uh, you can edit it a little bit. So, I'm going to connect first. Oh, I got to actually go back out. So, since I have, a, I have this connected to Wi Fi right now, I actually have to first change it if you were in an area that had no Wi-Fi network or you weren't connected to any known Wi-Fi networks it would basically auto connect uh, so it's connected and it's went ahead and it printed so that's obviously the standard I didn't really want to crop this or anything so you know it's fine as is and you guys see it popping out now what you can do though, and I've kind of gone back and forth on my opinion of it, I'm going to set this aside here to hope you guys can see it start to develop, uh, kind of hold it there, is you can go into edit and they have, well, there's templates, they're, they're junk, like it's, this is like, I don't know who wants to use this stuff, uh, edit the picture, which is, uh, kind of adjusting it, you can rotate it, you can zoom in a little bit, but the, the filters is the big one you can basically do black and white intelligent which kind of makes it more contrasty and then sepia is garbage so you know that, that's kind of your options there and uh you know you can go you can go from there you guys will see this start to develop here so i jumped ahead a little bit uh you can see it's you know pretty far along in development. It, I think it will develop a little bit more. I think they say four to five minutes for full development. So, you know, you kind of start to see the image pretty quickly, like sort of instant in the sense that you start to see it, but it takes a while to fully develop. I mean, it's still way faster than uh, Impossible Film. I actually have some over here that I've uh, shot with, which I don't know, I didn't, I didn't really end up liking it too much. But uh, this, this stuff takes like 40 minutes to develop. I'm not going to buy it again.
anyway, uh, point of this video was going back to the Instax, so I think it's shut down on me. Turn it back on yet again, and uh, I'll actually show you guys. So now we're now we're down to one last exposure. Battery's still the same. With this camera, you know, same same sort of quick, simple, real easy. Turn it on. Uh, I happen to have the photo I wanted to print queued up already. Photo I took uh, the other night, actually, kind of higher I well higher ISO. Let's see, uh, thirty two hundred ISO, one point two. 1 one twenty fifth. What I was digging about this photo is it kind of has the. It's starting to kind of give. Uh, it's not the same thing. I don't want to. I don't want to say medium format look because that's kind of a lie. But obviously this one point two lens gives a really nice kind of render. Kind of blows it out. And this, you know, you zoom in one hundred percent, you can see the. You know, it's 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 still a Fuji, so 3200 ISO is really not that bad, but uh, it's not super sharp. But with this thing, you're never gonna tell anyway, because it's not high resolution. I'm gonna put this back in the lights, so you can kind of see it. Uh, so basically, I'll so I'll just go back. So you look at the photo, you hit uh, why did I hit Q menu? You hit menu, and you have to go to another menu. It's uh, the second one, Instax Print. It's going to automatically connect to this because I've already set it up. So it, it knows my particular printer. You have to put in like the code. I think it's yeah on the bottom here. There's a, a, a pin number basically for your, an SSID for your Instax printer. And you really just send it. You know, you can't, you have to do any editing you want. If you want to crop it or, you know, I mean, that's really all you can do. If you're doing a raw conversion, you could maybe edit it a little bit more. But this is a shot JPEG. So, uh. You just hit transmit. It's pretty quick. You can already see the light. It already starting to get it, and I mean it's th it's that easy. So it still says sending. It's printing it already though, technically. So and you know that's it. You go back to shooting whatever you're shooting. Good to go. Pull this guy out and. Uh, Oh, and this is this is funny. This is good. This will show it. For whatever I've noticed, technically, it seems like whenever I have a photo, and I typically will shoot a portrait like this, and you saw it on the screen like that. I almost think this is like a firmware bug with Fuji. In my mind, I would think this would be the way you'd print it and it'd do that. But it's a good good thing to show here. You obviously with the with the app on your phone you see the orientation you don't see it on this and I forgot I've done this one other time and I told myself to remember next time and obviously I forgot but it's good to show for the video it does the reverse so you're gonna having the photo like that which most people kind of want that that uh tab or whatever on the bottom so it's not too big of a deal you, know, you could still hang it like this or stick it on the wall whatever you're gonna do with it. <clears throat> so yeah, you know, it's only been what like a, a minute. You can definitely see this image coming in. It's gonna get a little more contrast as it uh, completes, but uh, it's cool because you know, as, as as fun as this instant film is, and I do like it, the Instax printers currently and probably into the foreseeable future are all really low quality as far as the optics that they use. I, I believe they're all plastic optics. I think the Instax Wide Three Hundred I was talking about. It's actually I think they said two lenses and two groups, so it's just kind of two lenses separated. It's kind of, I don't know why they call them groups if each one is only one lens. But, you know, it's not much of anything. There was an old model that I guess they said wedding photographers used to kind of do, you know, quick shots for their, like the, you know, the wedding, the, the couple being married, you know, just for photos on the spot. And then they would obviously go and develop their film for their true photos, but it was called a 500 AF. It had, I think, three groups maybe two lenses each or something i think they're also plastic and at that time i think that was a an f12.8 lens and i think the new ones have an f14 lens so you can see this is actually shutting down the green flashing light uh so you basically have these super small aperture lenses and they're you know terrible quality and they're going to be fuzzy photo none of them are sharp and that that wide 300 i just mentioned it it does it's just zone focuses it has two different zones kind of like some of the old polaroids like the impulse polaroid i've actually posted some videos about uh 
you'd never be able to get a photo like this. So, you know, with a background like this from the, the 56 f1.2. If you look super close at these and you won't be able to see this in the video, you can kind of see a little bit of grain. This one, especially when you have a constant color like this, you guys may see it's almost like it looks like banding. It's because of the way this works. It has this little bo LED bar that has these tiny little LEDs that are exposing it, sort of like, you know, it would be exposed by light, except for it's scanning up it. Well, actually, it's going up this way. And because of that, it's not a, just a standard exposure. It kind of... It doesn't work well for this kind of thing so much. I mean, obviously, it's not a big deal. I kind of just like the, the colors on this. That's why I wanted to print it. But uh, for more stuff going on like this, it looks better. And, you know, again, it's it's only visible if you look closely. And it, they're not super sharp anyway. So, and that's why I say I was printing this. Because it's high ISO and you can't even tell. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. I would recommend this if you have any of the Fuji cameras that can send prints or you have a smartphone. I would, uh, I would recommend it over buying one of the Instax cameras because it's super small. You can connect to it. You can take the photo you want or take retake, you know, whether it's your phone or your camera until you, you get the shot you want instead of, well, you know, instant camera, which, you know, I was, this, this is actually the gold film was actually for, this is the, I think 100 I ASA or 160 ASA. This was for a Polaroid camera I had that turned out to be broken. So I had to take it out in the dark and put it into my impulse, which is designed for this film, which is 600 and, uh, you know, it works pretty well with the the built-in flash. I mean, the it's too blue and cold, the coloring. But using it in the wrong camera, I had to f adjust the exposure all the way out. And, you know, I did the, the close focus lens on the impulse, and it's still blurry. So, and the, you know, this was a mistake. So this kind of sucks when you're taking instant photo. Obviously, uh, Instax is way cheaper than, than Impossible. But, you know, this, this photo, I actually like the way this came out. The colors are kind of neat. And it's the slower exposure with the flash outside. You can kind of see some effect of it. It's, it kind of reminds me of second curtain shutter. <clears throat> His hands are blurred and whatnot from turning the wheel. But, uh, you know, if, if you don't get it right the first time, like there's another one. This is really blurry. She's totally out of focus, even though you did the close focus because she was closer than the closest focus as possible. So you don't get it right. You, you burn a shot with the Instax. If you take your photo with your phone and it sucks, take it again. Camera, obviously, you take a bunch of photos when you're done or at the time in the middle of it, find the one you like, print it, and you only print the one you wanted to see a good quality. You don't have to waste a bunch of shots. So I, I just think it's a better overall design. If Fuji ever gets around to making a high quality, uh, like Instax wide camera with a better lens, something like an F8 lens, kind of like the old Polaroids, I would be inter interested in that. I honestly would actually be probably more interested in if they could make a SP2 or something that uses wide film, same idea as this, and make it, you know, it's going to be a little bit bigger, obviously. This is one, the wide film would be there, but I, I wouldn't envision it being much more than this out here, so just be more of a maybe a longer box if it could do the same thing and print the wide photos even better because these are a little small that that i think would be probably their best bet is do an instax wide printer and i'd buy that because these are a little too small but uh yeah so that's kind of the instax setup with uh fuji's and uh your smartphone